Hello, viewer. Happy 4th. You may say Independence Day, I say 4th. I don't know why. I was raised in Canada, so this next uh, installment, I didn't learn a whole lot about, and by not a whole lot, I mean none at all. We spent an entire semester on how we burned down the White House before actually Canada was really a country, it was technically still a colony. The point is, the Civil War is more interesting. We have David Barton of Wall Builders here, uh, and we'll be doing an installment today on uh, the Civil War, and maybe some of the most common misconceptions before thank you for having us sure man good to have you here this is a civil war drum correct? it is a civil war drum it okay. is mm -hmm. is this a civil war camera that goes back to that time this is the kind of camera they used from civil war days going into the 1920s and 30s wow so it would have um, been the kind of stuff that brady would have used later to take pictures famous pictures of civil war you should put that on etsy <laughs> yeah. i wonder what we'll get for that yeah, yeah that's know. exactly someone would probably just think like oh that's quaint that yeah, looks that almost that's looks right. original um and you have a lot of artifacts here from right. the civil war um i guess let's sort of kind of walk people through the civil war a lot of folks say, and you hear this argued a lot, the Civil War really didn't have anything to do with slavery. Right. It was about economics, and it was about states' rights, and that's kind of, we look back on it more fondly thinking it was about freeing the slaves. Right. Um, is that accurate? Well, I, I kind of like to let the documents speak for themselves. Okay. And so when you look at the Civil War, you had 11 states that seceded to become the Confederate States of America. And so these 11 states, when they left the United States, they all wrote a document of secession on why they left. Mm -hmm. and, they, and by the way, all of their congressmen from those states gave farewell addresses on the floor of the House and Senate that are public record. Anybody can get them. Constitution requires us to keep records of every speech made. So that's public record out there. So if you take the secession documents of the 11 states telling the world why we did what we did, every one of them says it's because of slavery. Every one of them. Really? Now, that's the Southern documents. That's not a Northerner or anybody else. And, I, you know, I'm from the South, but that's mm -hmm. not anybody else saying, oh, you guys made it about slavery. They're the ones who said that. Without exception, all 11 said slavery is the issue. Now, you could say, well, it was economics. That's true, but the backbone of your economy was slavery. Right. And so that, that was economics. But you, yourself, in your secession document, you're the one who said that we left because he's trying to end slavery. It's interesting, we often hear the Civil War is about states' rights, and, and the federal government is trying to tell the southern states what to do. Right, and as, and as Federalists, as conservatives, that's an that's argument right. that would appeal to us to a degree. And, and so we think that it was all about states' rights, which is interesting that in the Confederate Constitution, to be a member of the Confederate States of America, you are not allowed to end slavery. You had to maintain slavery. That's mm. part of the Constitution. So if it's all about states' rights, what are you doing joining a group that won't let you have the right to decide what to do with that issue? That's a good point. So it, was, it really was about slavery, and, and that's made by their Constitution, their vice president. Also legalizing pot. They were ahead oh, of their that time. Was that was really too, big, yeah. Right. That was a big issue back yeah. then. Missouri, really big that's right. on that's legalizing right. weed. Well, you know, that's a border state. It was really the deep southern states like right. Alabama and all those states. Yeah, they, yeah, right. Yeah. So the, they, they really had this thing of, uh, of slavery was the issue, according to them, according to their political platforms, according to their own constitutions, and according to their secession documents. What about according to, we have this, I can touch this, correct? Yes. Because it's, I, I feel comfortable because it's very laminated. According to this man, Abraham Lincoln, uh, if he could have kept the union without ending mm -hmm. slavery. And a lot of people say that that's, that's what he would have done. He felt that that's it was right. necessary. So would he have done that? Would he, he would have kept have. slavery? Well, I see that the whole argument all the way up to that By point. the way, it looks a lot more ethnic than you usually think of Abraham Lincoln when you look at that. I mean, he could be Native American. He could be, I don't know, he could be U Ukrainian, Uzbekistanian. Yeah. The point is it's not Daniel Day-Lewis from, from <laughs> no, uh, the Crucible. Not. Okay, it is not. Ahead. So with Lincoln, are leading up to all those years t before the Civil War with to the abolition debates, there was no clear consensus that the Constitution prohibited slavery. That pretty much left it to each state. Right. Now, the Founding Fathers, they thought when they were doing the Constitution Convention, they all agreed, if you give us 20 years, we're going to end slavery, which is why they put the date at 1808. So 20 years after the Constitution was written, they thought they could get rid of slavery, they could ban the slave trade and be done with it. Even the pro-slavery states. And, and why did they want to do that? Who would, you, who, who would be included in those uh, founding fathers who wanted to end slavery? And well, it's interesting that when we did the Declaration of Independence, the longest single grievance in the Declaration was written by Thomas Jefferson, and it said, we have been trying to end slavery in America and the king won't let us. Because in 1773, you had Rhode Island, then you had Massachusetts and Connecticut, um, you, you had Pennsylvania all do anti-slavery laws. And in 1774, the king said, no, 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 
you're part of the British Empire. We have slavery. You're going to have slavery. Mm -hmm. So at that point, founding fathers like Ben Franklin and Benjamin Rush and others said, this is not right. We've been trying to free our own slaves. He won't even, we don't like slavery. We don't want it. Right. And so you'll find that 41 of the signers of the Declaration owned slaves. It's not a question of how many owned slaves. What did they do once they had the right to end slavery? So when we separate in 1776, you'll find that so many of those guys freed slaves said, this is what we've been waiting for. This is why we want to separate from Great Britain. Uh, and so the largest grievance in the Declaration is Thomas Jefferson saying, we've been trying to end slavery and they won't let us. Jefferson had been introducing anti-slavery laws in his own state. His state would not allow him to free his own slaves. Right. Not just the British, but his state. So what happened was... Was it, was it Jefferson who, or was it Washington who freed them at the time of his death? Washington freed them at the time of his death. There was a loophole in the law that was added in 1782 to Virginia law that said, okay, we want people to be free, so when you die, you can free. But even when, with that, even when you die, you can free your slaves. They never allowed you to free what were called dowry slaves. Mm. And dowry slaves were the slaves that came through the wife. So Martha's slaves, George Washington, he can't free Martha's slaves. You can never free a dowry slave. Wow. So Jefferson, by the time it came to Jefferson, the, the legislature said, what were we thinking about? That was a bad loophole, so they closed the loophole. They, he didn't even have that loophole at the time of his death. So what happened was Jefferson wrote this anti-slavery piece in the Declaration, and he wrote, because the Declaration says the unanimous Declaration, they all agreed that the only thing we'll put in the Declaration is what all 13 states agree on. Mm -hmm. Jefferson said South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia would not agree that slavery was a big issue. And so we had to take that clause out. Right. So, so the Civil War was a long states. time brewing. It didn't just come out of yeah, nowhere right. like a lot of people think. But those three states thought that if you give us 20 years, we can be away from slavery. And they probably would have been because slavery is economically unprofitable. Right. What kept it alive was 1803. The cotton gin comes in. And now a slave can do what 10 slaves used to do. So now I can make money. So it changed the whole economy. Slave economy changed. But there was the belief that by 1808 we can get this done in America. So, and before we move on, what are these here? I see uh, some... Uh, these are all weapons. Civil War... Oh, and by the way, sorry, I should have said, this is actually the picture that was used, right? That they used... That's uh, what they used to build the Lincoln Memorial. Uh, that is the picture that was used for that. And this is the negative that was used for that picture. The photo negative so of Abraham Lincoln. Now you're looking at what looked at Lincoln, wow. essentially. So, that, so all, all of this... So all that to say that at the time of Lincoln, Slavery was not a settled constitutional issue right? because the Constitution didn't matter. So his job was to take an oath to uphold the Constitution, yeah. which he would have done that if, if slavery had to be required. He hated it. He, he was against it. He spoke against it. But when it became clear after the split that I can't save the Union without ending slavery, then that's where he went. Okay. And he did that with this, I assume. Well, or this... Hit? <laughs> yeah. Actually... By the way, is, is that maybe a little short for you as a crutch? It's I a mean, little, it, yeah. It I almost is a belt height. This is came it, from a black soldier in the This Civil is a crutch? War. This is a crutch. That was oh. a black soldier in the Civil War. It actually War. seemed like he was pretty tall. Uh, oh, no, wait, it's a crutch. I was thinking right. cane. Never mind. Oh, wow. That was tiny, tiny Tim. By the way. That was midget Tim. While, while we're there. It's a far cry from Will Chamberlain. <laughs> yeah, he would, not, he would not have been the guy on the basketball team. He no, would, he wouldn't. It was a Canadian guy who invented basketball. While we're there. I want to introduce you to a guy, a very a famous too. guy in, uh, in, in Civil War. His name is John Clem. Okay. John Clem, for bravery at the Battle of Chickamauga, newspapers reported that for what he did in that battle, his bravery is so great that Lieutenant um, Rosecrans saw his bravery on the battlefield and promoted him on the spot from being a private to being a sergeant. Wow. And then General Thomas came in and said, no, 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 I need you on my staff and made him a lieutenant and put him on his staff, on the general staff. He's 12 years old. What? This, that is the soldier. That is, so that's his? That's crutch? not, no, no. This oh. is a black guy, but I want oh, you to see how okay. small they are. Well, it's were. hard to tell with the photo negatives in the nine, it's black and white, I couldn't really see. Okay, no, that's clearly a white 12. It's a white 12 year old. I don't see color. Here he is in his. You don't see color. I'm colorblind. This is my dad. We're all the human race. Oh, there you go. Sorry, go nice on. job. Okay. So this is him too. So you see how small, that's his soldier's, that, that is his sergeant's uniform. Wow. He's about this tall. And, and so, I mean, they were small, really small back then. And he was smaller than usual, but yeah. they were all pretty small. So this is, this is from the Mass 54th, the movie Glory. Yeah. This is one of the soldiers that was featured, and would have been featured in that movie Glory. The Matthew Mass Broderick 54th. probably could have actually used that. He crutch. probably could. He, yeah. He's about the right height for that. So that, that is from the Civil War. This is a hand grenade from the Civil War. Okay. Um, 
what you do, load it up with powder, and this is your firing pin right there, and it looks like a Nerf football. I was going to say, we used to have, with, uh, we used to have Velcro pads, That's and right. those we would throw That's them right. over the game, yeah. Well, you would throw this to the other side, and when it hit, it would blow up, and so that was your early hand grenade. Ages 7 and up with that one. <laughs> yeah, well, ages, ages 12 and up. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Yes. Ages, ages 12 and up. And these are swim goggles, I assume? Yes, they, they, they look exactly like it. They, they fit you so well. Yeah. Uh, actually, those, the guys who are blowing, using the cannons, this would protect their eyes. Small from powder? Cannon fire, yeah. Oh, wow. So that's, that's all the, the guys and artillery. Um, these are all things related to, to Civil War. And actually, one of the famous generals in the Civil War uh, was James A. Garfield. Okay. And he was so good at what he did that Lincoln said, I got to help you in Congress. I need help bad. So Garfield came back. He was a major general. He gets in Congress. He helps pass the first 23 civil rights laws that are passed for equality in Congress. He becomes the 20th president. And this happens to be a letter from him. It's kind of I don't want to say this. It's not what you expect of a president, but in this letter, uh, he says here, he's a preacher, and he. I can't believe he would call someone's wife that. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, you okay. Would say, no, I, I can't really. Again. I can't. I can't read this <laughs> at all. I don't know how you can read this. He, he, he says he preached 19 times in a revival meeting. He, there were 34 editions, and he baptized 31 by immersion. So here you got a guy who is a guy we have know as a president who was a revival preacher. Wow. I mean, we don't think about faith with these guys, and that was a really big part of their life. Well, let me see. How do you juxtapose where people talk about Abraham Lincoln and uh, you know, the belief that uh, a black man was worth three-fifths that of a white oh, man? Oh, I love you brought that up. The best answer to that is to go to black commentators on the Constitution. Go to Frederick Douglass. Mm -hmm. Because Frederick Douglass escaped from slavery. He made it to Boston. He started speaking um, first in New York for the New York Abolition Society, and then Boston wanted to hire him full time. And he was trained at the feet of what are called radical abolitionists, Garrett and Smith and some of those guys. And they said, you know, we have a real problem in America. We have a pro-slavery constitution. It's been flawed from the beginning. We need a new constitution. So these hardcore abolitionists thought the constitution's a flawed document. He said, I, I believe that. I, they were taught. He said, but when I was hired full time by the, by the uh, Massachusetts Abolition Society to speak full time, he said, I decided I better read it for myself. He said, when I read the Constitution, he said, I saw that in it there was not a single pro-slavery clause. It was anti-slavery in every... Well, then what do you do with three-fifths? Three-fifths, if you go back to the debates in 1787, three-fifths, the southern states said, we want to count every black. And the northern states said, count them, but free them first. They need mm -hmm. to be free because you're not representing them. You're using them. Right. To... And so what happened was they arrived at this compromise and said, okay, every black you count, you get more pro-slavery representation in Congress. So they went back and forth and said, okay, here's the deal. We'll let you count three-fifths of your blacks. And so that cut pro-slavery representation by 40% in Congress. It was nothing about the worth of the individuals. Right. It was about the representation from them. And so when people hear that three, the Constitution says blacks are only worth three-fifths, Frederick Douglass said, I checked it. That's not true. That right. was an anti-slavery provision to limit that. And how so, long did that last? It, it's still in the Constitution. That, well, it, it was done away with the Civil Rights Amendments, 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment, right. and 1865 through 1870. That's no longer an issue. Right. So, so they got to it pretty under. quickly. They, they, yeah. And it was interesting that when, when they did that, I mean, back in the founding era, it was the anti-slavery founding fathers who came up with the three-fifths clause to put less pro-slavery people in Congress. And does that come with being so close to taxation without representation as well there? Because basically you weren't representing them. That's right. You weren't counting them, but not representing them. You were counting them, not representing them. And that's what, the, that's what the North said. And by the way, this was a fun debate. Um, they said, you know, you guys in the South, you say that blacks are your property. And you're counting your property to get more pro-slavery right. reps. So we're going to count our horses and our cows and our chairs and our brooms and our every. And, for and right now, someone's going to get mad and say, you're comparing black slaves to horses and cows. Right. No, we're not. They remove the historical context. You know, for example, you see this sometimes where when you are fighting really bad enemies abroad for, uh, with uh, foreign policy, sometimes you have to uh, partner or form coalitions with the lesser of evil. Yeah. Sometimes the historical context is, well, why do we have a relationship with Saudi Arabia? Stalin we're not really World happy. Yeah, exactly. We're not, weren't big fans necessarily of Stalin. The three-fifths was a means to an end to just make sure that That's they right. were, weren't being misrepresented. That's right. 
And uh, well, I appreciate it. I tried to lay that one up, and you handled it superbly. So I got another one for you here. Uh, I'm distracted by the hand grenades. What was this? Was this was this in case oh, you needed that, to get rid of your leg and turn it into this? Well, that's right. Leg? If you get shot right there, I will promptly take your leg off for you. Careful. And I to be a Seems good like surgeon. Seems central. Oh yeah, I would say so right now. I wonder what DNA would show if we tested that for blood. But at that point in time, probably not a white guy. If I yeah. Back may not there. have been. May not have been. Uh, if I could not take your leg off and stop the bleeding within a minute, I could not be a surgeon. So I, and, and you're going to get no. That's a horrible incentive. That's a horrible I want incentive. The, I want a surgeon to take as much care as possible. Take your time, doc. No, because you get no painkillers. And if I don't do it in under a minute, you will bleed out and bleed to death. So I have to be able to do it, take it off, and stop the bleeding. Wait, so this actually used to cut off a leg? This was used to cut off a leg. Oh my God, this I was joking. No, no, this is for real. This is your amputation saw in the Civil War. Oh. Children could see that. And you see this coming at you, and you've got no, no kind of deadening. No, I mean, there's nothing, no anesthesia. So I'm watching, there are actually- Was that because Abraham Lincoln's wife was taking it all? She had the opium going <laughs> yeah. on, right? That is well, true, that yeah. is true. She did have the-, uh, the there, were, the, there was, yeah, she had a lot of depression problems. Yep. A lot of depression problems. Um, okay, so let me ask, that, that is absolutely terrifying. I thought it was ah, a little, no, you're actually cutting off your leg. Imagine that, do you, do you just think of how much more intimate battle was back then? One, one of the, in Vicksburg, Mississippi, there's bat battlefield memorabilia kind of stuff that's there. And one of them is, is they would cut off your leg, they would give you one of the bullets to bite, and it's where they get biting the bullet. And they have bullets there, they were bitten by guys, the bullet's about that big, and when it's over, it's about that big, and it is as thin as paper because they just keep biting on it. Were they stupid people? They were shaving. They had leather strokes. Why don't they just bite on leather? What would give them man. give them lead? I don't know. Okay. That they bite the bullet and, and there are actually it's a number photographs. Two pencil. Go to town. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. <laughs> but the, there are actually pictures of where that uh, a surgeon was in the middle of sawing off a guy's leg. It's halfway through, and they all look up and smile for the camera, and then he goes back to sawing again. And the guy who's getting his leg sawed off is actually looking at the camera, smiling for the with a bullet. Uh, so like, oh my. Do you gosh. think maybe it started with one guy bit the bullet to show how tough he was, and then no one else thought I can bite the leather belt? They're like, well, Dennis bit the bullet, yeah. so now I got to do it. Otherwise, I'm never going to hear the end of it from the guys that are going to do a movie about them with glory. Yeah, yeah. Morgan Freeman's never going to let me live this down. No telling where it came from. Gosh. My gosh. I, I, I see that stuff, and it, I just I cringe to think what it was like to live back then. And 620,000 guys gave their lives one side or the other. A lot sacrificed their lives to end slavery. A lot sacrificed their lives to defend a system they didn't really understand. Right. A lot of Southern guys, they weren't fighting for slavery. They're fighting because the North invaded. That's, important. That's an important delineation because I think a lot of people where they say, well, we see the Confederate flag as a symbol of heritage and we don't see it the way you see it. I think a lot of people from the South don't see it that way, but That's like right. the leadership, when they had the opportunity to clarify their position, they made it very clear that they wanted to leave because of slavery. Mm -hmm. um, let, me ask right. you, let me ask you this. Uh, this is something we hear a lot about, a lot about uh, Young Turks, MSNBC, CNN. It's sort of accepted as a truism, the, the Southern strategy. They so, say, well, yeah, Abraham Lincoln was a Republican. And if you look back then, Republicans, obviously, they're the ones about freeing the slaves. And if you look at even the Civil Rights Act, but there was, there was a Southern strategy where it swapped. What do you say to that? Well, it, it certainly was not that way for the first more than a century. Right. Um, I mean, if I take a, a piece like this, this is a hit card for the Klan. This shows, and the lynching's a big deal for wow. the Klan. So they have given you now it's the kind of their the raison d'etre when you really think of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. 63 names here that need to be taken care of. 63 names. These are all Republican members of the legislature. There are 50 blacks, there are 13 whites. Now, people say, wait a minute, they didn't lynch whites. Yeah, there were 4,800 lynchings. And the 4,800 lynchings that, that happened with those 4,800 lynchings, 1,300 were white, 3,500 were black. The lynchings were Republicans. Now, the deal was just about any- White Republicans? White Republicans. You couldn't lynch any white because some might be Democrats. But blacks, you know, that's a different thing. Right. So you, you could go at it that way. And so what you find is when you look after once, once the 13th and 14th Amendment were passed, you could elect blacks to office in the South. And in states like Louisiana, states like South Carolina, Mississippi, you had more blacks than you did whites. 
So what happens is, for example, the first 137 blacks elected in Louisiana were all Republicans. Right. The first 41 blacks in Texas, the first 190 blacks in South Carolina, the first 99 in Alabama, 112 in Mississippi, et cetera. So it, the, the switching of parties, no, blacks were strong Republicans at that point in time. And they say, well, you know, that's, that started changing in the 60s, the Southern Strom Thurman. strategy. Strom Thurmond. All right, Strom Thurmond was a Democrat. No question, he ran against Harry Truman because Harry Truman did some really good civil rights stuff, helped desegregate the military. He would not kowtow to the Democrats in his party that were racist, so they ran a Democrat against him, Strom Thurmond, the Dixiecrat Party. So Strom Thurmond runs as a Southern Democrat against, and, and you know, Harry Truman, I mean, he, he is from a southern state, a, a border state. He was raised in, in a racist atmosphere, but he did the right thing with helping civil rights. And so Strom Thurmond is a Democrat. Well, Strom Thurmond became a Republican. He sure did, and he became a Republican because he changed his philosophy, because he became the first Senate Republican from the South to hire blacks onto his staff as major positions. And so it's not Democrats that did that. It was a Republican who did that. He left the Democrat Party because of their positions. So when they point to Strom Thurmond, you've also got to look at the fact that he also changed his policy positions, and he was no longer he a Republican. He became less racist. Party. He became less racist, and actually, he tried to break through the barrier. He had a lot of education, a lot of... Well, you know, I think we're going to do a whole installment because you have so much here right. on, uh, on black history. So before we uh, do that... But let, let, before we do that, let yeah. me, here's what Similar. I say. For those who say in the South, I say, okay, the, the, let's, let's assume you're right. Let's assume that Democrats switched to the Republican Party. I'm going to take any Southern state in the, in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, you're, you're going to have a thousand people elected to office every election. You're, you're going to have the, your local people, your county people, your others. And it was called the Solid Democrat South for a reason because Democrats not. So I want you to find me any 10 offices in the South where the Democrats became Republicans and got elected. You just show me 10 out of a thousand. Nobody's shown me more than two or three. Well, you got Strom Thurmond and you got David Duke, and David Duke went back to the Democrat Party. They can show me two or three. Right. Show me, if you're saying that, that the thing, you got to show me a majority, otherwise your sure. premise doesn't hold up. Yeah. You can't even show me 10 out of 1,000. So this is what people repeat without thinking about it, and there's certainly not evidence enough to prove that it was a shift, what they call the Southern strategy. So the Republican Party is still the party of Lincoln. Uh, yes, I don't think they know that because I don't think they know what Lincoln believed and I don't think they knew what the original platform. This happens to be the original Republican platform. That's the very first one. Uh, there's only nine planks in the platform. Seven of the nine deal with civil rights, equality, making all people equal, um, equality in pay, etc. That's the original Republican platform and I'll bet you most Republicans have no clue what it is. This is the second Republican platform uh, in 1860, 17 planks. Uh, this is the third Republican platform, compa compares the uh, Democrats and the Republicans side by side. This is the first platform to call for a constitutional amendment to abolish slavery. Uh, so I would say most Republicans today don't know what Lincoln believed, although the platforms tell us what he believed. Um, but no question that, that Lincoln was anti-slavery. Um, Okay, I guess we, I was going to say what, uh, I was going to ask you what you believe the most common misconceived uh, notion of the Civil War was, but I think that we've addressed it in full. It seems to be that a lot of people don't think it was actually about slavery. Uh, and of course, we have more segments. You can just hit subscriber notifications on YouTube. Let us know. We'll probably come back out here as well after the 4th of July week uh, to do more segments with David Barton because, my, my God, this is, I don't want to touch anything, though. I'm very uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm, I'm sweating. It's like a library. I keep sure. thinking I'm going to get shushed hold by a lady it. who looks get, like get an over. angry you, snail. You can hold it. You I don't know. It. I'm not comfortable. I just, it's going to spawn spontaneously combust. Uh, we have the Civil War, we have Second Amendment, First Amendment. Go enjoy those videos, or don't. You don't have to. That's the wonder of the Constitution. You don't have to do anything. Do it.